Good morning. So, recently I've been thinking about Adobe Photoshop. Now, I've been paying Adobe, literally, I've paid them seven and a half million pounds over the last four gazillion years. Ish. I don't know. It feels like that. That's how it feels. I've been paying them for the longest time for Adobe Photoshop. I don't really use it very much. Also pay them for Adobe Lightroom, which I use all the time every day, and I don't begrudge one penny going to Adobe Lightroom because it's a great tool. In fact, I don't really begrudge any pennies going to Adobe Photoshop either because it's a tool I use every day in my photography business, and that's fair enough. We have to pay for this stuff, right? But it did make me think recently, you know, that I've been using it, I can't even remember the first version, like Photoshop three or something in the early 90s and all the way through and really most of the stuff that I use on a daily basis and I don't use Photoshop that much probably once a week once a month a couple of times a month the things that I use it for are just basic retouching pretty much the same as I used to back in the day you know so I'm not using much of the new stuff that they're bringing out with every one of these updates which seems to come out every three minutes in in 2022 anyway I thought, you know what, I need to bring this old dinosaur up to date. I need to know what is going on in Adobe Photoshop that I'm paying for that I'm not using. It turns out it's neural filters. Now, I thought that was neutral filters, which I was suddenly thinking, oh, like neutral density filters? That could be cool. But no, it's neural filters. And this, I think, I don't know what neural means even, but it sounds like it's something to do with artificial intelligence, right? Which, you know, instantly makes me want to glaze over. But I'm interested, this is a Voyager discovery. So I'm gonna dive in with a bunch of pictures and see what the neural filters can offer to an old dinosaur photographer like me. Turns out there's all kinds of different stuff that you can do. You know, let's dive on in and we'll see. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and I have pulled up a few of my old black and white pictures back from my film days a lifetime ago. Shot on HP5, I think, on an old Canon T90 probably. And one of the things that piqued my interest about the uh, new raw filters was the ability to um, colorize old black and white pictures. Now, once I've dived into the menu, there's all kinds of other stuff available as well. Smart portrait, skin smoothing, super zoom, uh, landscape mixer, and we'll dive into those in a minute. But to begin with, I'm just gonna go through a few pictures really quickly and see how the colorize um, artificial intelligence thing works out. We will just use it on auto settings and just have a look. So here we go, I'm quite excited to see. It takes a while. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that wasn't really worth the wait for that one, to be perfectly honest. Um, let's have a look at a different picture. Oh, so here we have a picture of Ewan McGregor. And let's go, neural filters. Um, be interesting to see what happens with this. Um, colorize. Oh, well that's ever so slightly better. That's not horrible, um, but it is kind of horrible. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> well, we're here, should we try the skin smoothing on Ewan? See what happens. Oh. <laughs> Taken about. 10 years off of him. <laughs> Let's turn that off. That's kind of quite interesting. I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, we'll try a few more colorize options. Okay, so this is a picture taken in Romania um, and I shot it on black and white and I kind of wish over the years that I had shot it on color actually, uh, even though I absolutely love it in black and white. So we will see um, what happens when we go into the neural filters. Um, let's just pull that back so we can see the whole picture. Colorize. I hope this might be nice. Um, it's not horrible, but I wouldn't use it, so it's of very limited use, I guess. Um, prefer in black and white. Let me know your thoughts, by the way. Be interested here. Okay, this is a picture taken out in Uganda, and we will try this again. Shot this on a, on a Rolleiflex with 120 HP5, I believe. Uh, we will try and see how that looks. Um, okay, colorize on. And we will see. Uh, well, it's done an interesting job of picking out the dress, I guess, in the background, but not a very interesting job of working out the t-shirt because it's kind of um, given it two different colors. I don't like this kind of yellow wash. I wouldn't use it, not interested. 
pencil. Um, let's have a look. Oh, look, Paddy Ashdown, the late great Paddy Ashdown, shot for a local newspaper years ago, the local MP on a visit to a pottery uh, place somewhere. Um, I love, <laughs> I love how interested all of these people seem in this pot. <laughs> it's like the it's the, the perfect um, local newspaper picture. They're really, really interested in, a, in in the pottery. Let's see what happens if we um, bung a colorized filter onto this. I've got an idea what might happen. <laughs> I'm yet to be, I'm ever hopeful. Hmm, that's kind of done a, an interesting job I suppose in terms of it's picked out the faces and I guess <laughs> is that skin tone I, d I, I don't know it's not the <laughs> I don't know what I would do with that it's a very limited use um, to be perfectly honest um, there's one other picture I quite like to to throw at this which is this one Um, which is a portrait taken out in Cuba and I shot this on colour but I've never been able to get a good scan from the negative and so I'll be interested to see how this comes out if I colourise it. Oh! Now I actually quite like that. I quite like the tone that has that's probably the best colour that I've actually seen. Even though I shot this in colour I've always kept it in um, black and white because I preferred it so I couldn't get the colour nice. Turns out the artificial colour is actually a little bit kind of okay. Although, again, would I use it? I don't know. It's not, you know, no. Because <laughs> it's not real, right? <laughs> don't save. Okay. By the way, at this stage, let me just say, I'm not trying to knock Photoshop or anyone that uses these things. I guess I'm just trying to discover <laughs> how it all is. And it, this might come across as a slightly kind of negative voiced um, <laughs> video, and I don't mean it to be like that. If, you're, if you love this stuff, then that's cool. Um, but I suppose as a photographer that spent my life trying to make creative decisions at the point of capture, you know, waiting for the right light, waiting for the right expression, choosing black and white, or choosing colour, mostly. Um, making those creative decisions to try and make the best of any kind of moment. The fact that we now can alter things afterwards kind of, I suppose, mungles my brain to some extent <laughs> and, and also makes me fearful of where we might be going and people just not trusting what they're seeing in terms of photography anymore, which is, you know, a terrible shame, I think. Anyway, back into some of the other neural filters. Okay, so I don't upset anyone. I'm just going to use myself as the put as a mugshot of me um, to try out the skin smoothing and smart portrait section of this video. So here I am in all of my um, you know faded glory with lots of wrinkles and creases, and I'm going to put on the skin smoothing and see what happens. So here we go. Takes just oh look. <laughs> I've been dynasty-fied. <laughs> oh, that's quite funny, actually. I think that's done a reasonable job. I don't like it. I do. <laughs> I think we're living in an interesting time with skin smoothing because iPhones do it automatically and smartphones do it automatically. Many people kind of aren't really aware of what they actually really look like, and this is a whole other issue. But in terms of if you're into skin smoothing, I don't think that's done a bad job, and you can adjust it accordingly, can you? Uh, yeah, look at that. You can make it smoother or less smooth or more smooth. Add different levels of... Oh, look. <laughs> that, that's gone full. That's gone full metal jacket. Okay, let's make it... Look, that's what I look like in real life. Every one of these creases and um, <laughs> grey hairs have been earned in the real uh, <laughs> battle of life. I'm quite proud of them, to be perfectly honest. But look, if I turn my skin smoothing on, look, it's all gone and I look like a teenager again. <laughs> Not for me, to be perfectly honest. Um, let's turn that off and let's try this smart portrait thing. Okay, so what this does is it enables you to be happy. <laughs> Can it make this old wrinkly dinosaur happy? Let's try, let's turn it all the way up. And it's saying down here that it's processing in the cloud. Now, I don't know what that means, whether it means it sent my picture up to a little 
man in a little hut somewhere who's editing it as we speak and then downloading it back down the tube to me or is it all happening automatically i, don't know, I hope it isn't that because i don't want a little man in a hut having my picture um that's <laughs> that's me that's me being happy <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> yeah, I quite like that. <laughs> Even though it's, it's done something weird to my ear and I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, look, I can make my facial age different. Let's just put, let's just put all of these up in each different direction. So I can change my eye direction as well. So I'm going to become a swivel-eyed monster uh, with very thick or very thin hair. I'm not sure which way it'll go. Let's see. <laughs> I'm laughing, but <laughs> Look, before, <laughs> I'm not sure which one's worse, <laughs> after, <laughs> oh, let's go all the other way, come on, let's see what happens if I go, let's not, let's not be happy anymore, let's be whatever the opposite of happy is, I don't know, this is taking a while, I'm sorry, but, um, it's just how long it takes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I really like this one. <laughs> this is good. Okay. <laughs> it's taken all of my grey hair away. <laughs> um, let's look what else you can do here. Okay, so we can go into expressions. Oh, I could be surprised or angry as well. Let's make me very surprised and see what happens. Um, each time it takes a few seconds. Here we go. Come on, I can't wait to see. <laughs> well, look, I'm laughing at this stuff, but actually it's completely and utterly pointless, to be perfectly honest. I can't see any place for this in any, in anything, anything at all. I mean, I know I look ridiculous in real life, but, um, <laughs> I'd rather look ridiculous in real life than artificially ridiculous oh i've got another example we've got margaret thatcher uh tory party conference something like 1997 something like that i was wondering what uh, might happen if we tried to make maggie um let's try and make maggie happy and see what happens be interesting to see this is an old digital file right again processing in the cloud it takes a little while this isn't um, something that's going to happen that quickly. Wow. That's actually quite impressive. Totally horrible, <laughs> but, but frighteningly impressive. What do you think? Let me know. Um, I hate it, to be perfectly honest. I'm not going to go any deeper into that whatsoever. That kind of scares me.
So, a quick summary. Now, I'm not sponsored, I'm just giving you my opinion based on 30 years of experience, but it is only my opinion. Everyone will have different thoughts, of course. And, you know, most people whose content you watch about new releases of Photoshop will be sponsored. So they will be receiving some money to make you think that the newest version of Photoshop is the best thing since sliced bread. I don't really like this stuff. I don't really like these neural filters. I don't really like this AI stuff to be perfectly honest. I think photography needs to be based in some level of reality. And as soon as you start changing things to a higher extent, um, then I think we get into dangerous territory. Um, so, you know, photographers like me have been paying and using Photoshop for the last three decades. And I don't know how happy I am that they're going down this road, to be perfectly honest. This isn't Instagram or some app that you get on your phone for flipping out faces. This is a benchmark piece of serious software for professional photographers and advanced photographers to use. And I'm not too sure how happy I am that they're now enabling people to change people's faces with different expressions to make someone that's naturally grumpy look happy with a kind of fake beak stuck on the front of him or make a dodgy picture of a landscape look better by just whacking a Hawaiian sky in behind it and some weird mountain growing out of the top of a tree. You know, I don't know how happy I am about all that. Obviously, some of the things that it can do, it can do really well. But just because you can do something doesn't necessarily mean to say that you should do it or that it should be widely available for everybody to use randomly and as irresponsibly as they may or may not do. So, you know, if you have any thoughts on other software that can match Photoshop, you know, let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear your opinions about all of these different things. You know, and a suggestion for Photoshop, I suppose, is if you can't think of anything actually worthwhile to do, rather than wasting your time on artificial intelligence just making things look even worse than they were in the first place. You know, spend your time maybe thinking about educating people about the importance of honesty in photography and, you know, that, 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 that we need to just kind of be proud of who we are. We don't need to change our faces. We need to be shown in the best possible likes. Everybody likes to be have a flattering picture taken of them. But you know, this face, these lines, these um, you know marks all over my face and my grey hair—they're all, all there for a reason. They're they're my face. It's been lived in. It's had a hard life. <laughs> I wish it wasn't quite so rough, but it is, and it's my face, and I'm I'm quite proud of it actually. And I think pushing rather than a, a smoothened. Um, kind of artificially changed version of my face. I'd much rather just see my own ugly mush. I'm quite proud of it. Um, and the same with landscapes and all of those things. The world is what it is and we don't need to change it too much with artificial intelligence. But this does get us into some quite deep territory, deep water of, you know, that every creative decision that we make in photography is um, it, it is taking things one step away from reality. Every lens choice, every exposure choice, every film or colour or black and white choice, the post-production that we do, it, it, we get into deep water very quickly. Right? I'd love to hear your thoughts about these things. I think artificial intelligence is going to be a huge subject for the future. I'm just touching on it here. I know I could have spent more time in the software learning it better and everyone will have different opinions. I could have used different pictures. Um, so I haven't, it, this isn't an exhaustive review by any means, but it's just my opinion so far. I hope you found something of use here. Um, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.